The night was unusually cold, and a shiver ran down my spine as I stood behind the counter of the dimly lit gas station. The desolation of the midnight shift was a stark contrast to the daytime bustle of customers. I glanced out of the window at the empty, rain-soaked parking lot and hoped for a quiet night. That hope was shattered when the doorbell chimed, announcing the arrival of a customer. I looked up and saw a man entering the store, his hood drawn low over his face, obscuring his features. It wasn't unusual for late-night customers to keep to themselves, but something about this man made me uneasy. I forced a polite smile as he approached the counter. Can I help you with anything, sir? He didn't respond. Instead, he produced a weathered note and slid it across the counter. My curiosity peaked, I picked it up. It was a handwritten message, simple but chilling, this is a robbery. Give me all the cash, and no one gets hurt. Panic surged through me, and my hands trembled as I reached for the cash register. The man's hood concealed his face, but I could sense his unwavering gaze fixed on me. As I handed over the money, a disconcerting silence hung in the air, broken only by the faint hum of the fluorescent lights. Thank you, the man finally murmured, snatching the cash and turning to leave. He walked toward the exit, his steps slow and deliberate, but then he froze mid-stride, as if an invisible force had seized him. His body stiffened, and he let out a low, agonized moan. I watched in disbelief as he was propelled forward, crashing into the exit door. It swung open with a jarring clang, and the man stumbled out into the rain-soaked night. But there was something terribly wrong, he appeared to be propelled by an unseen hand, his body contorting unnaturally. My heart pounded in my chest as I rushed to the door to see what had happened. Through the rain-streaked window, I saw the man writhing on the ground, his limbs twisting in grotesque directions. It was a nightmarish sight, as though he were being tormented by invisible demons. A sense of dread washed over me as I dialed 911, reporting the bizarre incident unfolding before my eyes. I could barely find the words to explain what I had witnessed. The operator assured me that help was on the way, but fear gripped me as I realized that there was something otherworldly at play. The man's agonized cries continued to pierce the night, growing louder and more harrowing. It was as if some malevolent force was exacting its revenge. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the torment ceased. The man lay motionless on the rain-soaked pavement, his body twisted and broken. The police arrived within minutes, their flashing lights casting an eerie glow on the scene. They questioned me about what had transpired, but I could offer no rational explanation. It was a ghostly robbery, an otherworldly event that defied all reason. In the days that followed, the gas station became a hub of speculation and rumor. Some said the place was cursed, while others believed it was haunted by vengeful spirits. I couldn't deny the eerie truth. I had been a witness to the inexplicable, a participant in a nightmare that left more questions than answers. The rain had transformed the night into a relentless deluge, and I was navigating a desolate stretch of highway, desperately trying to reach my destination. The gas gauge had been warning me of an impending empty tank for miles, and the nearest station seemed like an oasis in the storm. Its flickering neon sign promised salvation, and I pulled into the dimly lit lot with relief. As I parked next to the old, weathered gas pumps, the rain drummed on my car's roof like a sinister lullaby. The station appeared abandoned, and my unease grew with every step towards the restroom. I had no choice, nature's call was relentless. I pushed open the restroom door, and a sickly yellow light flickered above, casting uneven shadows on the cracked linoleum floor. The place reeked of mold and decay, and the humming of the old fluorescent lights sounded like the chorus of lost souls. A cold shiver coursed down my spine as I entered one of the stalls, 
and I struggled to push thoughts of haunted restrooms from my mind. It was an old gas station, things were bound to be a bit creepy. But the moment I locked the stall door, I heard it, a soft, sinister whisper that seemed to seep through the rusted metal. Help me. My heart leapt into my throat, and I froze. The voice had been so faint, barely more than a breath, but there was no mistaking it. It came from the adjacent stall. Panic surged through me as I strained to listen, but there was nothing, just the sound of the rain against the roof. Is someone there? I finally managed to stammer, my voice trembling. Silence answered my shaky inquiry, and I felt a bead of sweat trickle down my temple. Maybe it was a trick of the wind or a faulty vent that carried sounds from the outside. I tried to convince myself of a rational explanation, but doubt not at the edges of my mind. Summoning all the courage I could muster, I unlocked the stall door and peered into the one beside it. The flickering light revealed nothing unusual, just an empty, decrepit restroom stall. But as I was about to retreat, a chilling gust of air swirled around me, extinguishing the feeble restroom light. In the pitch black darkness, I fumbled for my phone, using its dim glow to find my way. And that's when I saw it, a shadowy figure, hunched in the corner of the restroom. Its presence seemed to absorb the feeble light, rendering it nearly invisible. I could feel its eyes on me, cold and malevolent. My heart raced, and I stumbled backward, rushing for the exit. The door slammed shut behind me with an eerie finality, and I found myself trapped in the narrow hallway, my only escape blocked. Panic surged as I tried to wrench the door open, but it wouldn't budge. From the other side, a guttural whisper echoed in my ears. Help me. I turned, desperately seeking another way out, but the restroom was inescapable, its walls closing in on me. The air grew colder, and a spectral chill wrapped around my body, squeezing the breath from my lungs. And then I saw it, the figure, now closer, its hooded silhouette emerging from the restroom's depths. It was a dark, shapeless entity that seemed to defy the laws of reality, its presence unnatural and terrifying. In a last-ditch effort, I hurled myself against the restroom door, and it finally gave way, releasing me into the pouring rain. The storm had intensified, and the gas station seemed to creak and groan in the tempest. As I peeled away from that accursed place, the image of the haunted gas station restroom haunted my thoughts. The sinister whisper lingered in my mind, a chilling reminder of the horrors that lurked in the darkness, waiting for the next unsuspecting traveler to stumble upon their malevolent domain. The stormy night was relentless, and I'd been driving for what felt like hours on a winding, rain-soaked road. My fuel gauge was mercilessly flirting with empty, and panic clawed at my chest with every passing mile. The occasional flicker of my headlights revealed nothing but a desolate stretch of highway, and the occasional flash of lightning illuminated the grim reality that I was running out of options. With a heavy sigh, I spotted a rusted, weather-beaten sign announcing a gas station up ahead. Its letters were barely visible through the driving rain, but it was my last hope. I turned off the highway and pulled into the eerily quiet station. The rain poured down relentlessly as I parked next to the old gas pumps. They looked like relics from another era, and the dim overhead lights cast long, ominous shadows in every direction. The wind howled through the station, and I shivered, though it wasn't solely because of the cold. An inexplicable unease settled in the pit of my stomach. I knew I needed to refuel, but as I stepped out of my car, the rain immediately drenched me. I fumbled with the nozzle, attempting to insert it into my gas tank, but it wouldn't cooperate. Frustration and desperation mingled within me, threatening to overwhelm my senses. Need some help? The voice was soft, almost a whisper, but it pierced through the rain and my racing thoughts. Startled, I glanced around, searching for the source, 
but the gas station remained empty. I was alone, or so I thought. I said, do you need some help? The voice was closer now, as if the speaker were standing right beside me. My heart hammered in my chest as I turned, my eyes straining to pierce the darkness. A figure materialized, a hazy silhouette in the rain. I could barely discern the shape, a tall and slender form cloaked by a hood that concealed their features. I, ah, uh, yeah, I stuttered, my voice betraying my unease. I can't get this thing to work. The figure moved closer, and as they did, the rain seemed to intensify, as if responding to their presence. I could now see the faint outline of a hand reaching out, gently guiding the nozzle into my gas tank. It slid in effortlessly, as if guided by an unseen force. Thank you, I managed to say, my voice trembling. I don't know what I would have done without you. The figure remained silent, focused on the gas pump. My eyes were drawn to the numbers on the display, which spun rapidly, far faster than they should have. I could hear the gas rushing into my tank, but there was something unnatural about the speed, something unsettling. Is everything okay? I ventured to ask, my unease growing by the second. The hooded figure continued manipulating the pump, and a deep sense of dread washed over me. I wanted to back away, to retreat to the safety of my car and leave this strange place behind. But an inexplicable force held me in place, as though I were entranced by this mysterious attendant. Finally, the figure released the nozzle and turned to face me. Their hooded face remained shrouded in darkness, and yet I could feel their gaze on me. It was an intense, penetrating stare that sent a shiver down my spine. I think you've had enough, they said, their voice low and disconcerting. Before I could react, they took a step toward me, reaching out with an outstretched hand. Panic surged through me, and I stumbled backward, my heart pounding in my chest. Fear raced through my veins as I realized that I had walked right into a trap. With desperation fueling me, I turned to flee back to my car. But as my trembling hand reached for the door handle, it swung open of its own accord, knocking me to the wet pavement. Pain shot through my head as it made contact with the ground. The hooded figure loomed over me, their presence suffocating. I tried to crawl away, my vision blurring, but it was futile. The world spun around me, and my last conscious thought was of the phantom attendant and the gas station that concealed its malevolent secrets.